on corporate sector and Indian economy, and another title in the pension systems. So he has been a spirited campaigner in the fight against black money and corruption. If anybody you know is not knowing that, that would be very surprising. Um, and uh, thanks again for coming. And let's get started with a very dynamic speaker who's going to educate us and humor us a lot. Okay, so Professor Vaidya. You can you can pull the screen down. Right? Maybe you can just sit up a little aside. Copied all the files. Hello. Then show you the files. Indian responses. Uh, you have any file called Indian responses? Yeah. Can use that continue and then yeah just a couple of minutes i need to you can see you got that thing yes yes one i got it Argentina, Mexico and Chile. 
there were the major cracks. In Argentina was the primary uh, problem uh, in those days. And uh, that was considered as a Latin American crisis. Now today there is a big crisis in Spain, uh, France, uh, Portugal. And that is called global crisis. So the first point I want to note it down is, you know, what, how, the, how we view the idea of the world. So there is a crisis in Spain, it's called a, or a UK also, it's called a global. It's primarily an Anglo-Saxon crisis. It's a crisis in Europe and a crisis in Europe. More so in Europe rather than in But why should we are involved in this? We are really, really involved in this. The reason is, during the Second World War, before the beginning of the Second World War, one of the interesting comments of British uh, Army General made is, we will fight the Germans to the last Indian. <laughs> so, we will fight the Germans to the last Indian. So, we would be uh, pushed into this action. Already we have given, some of you may be knowing, who read newspaper, 56,000 crores to help Europe. It comes to nearly 1% of our GDP. Through what is known as the IMF system. When uh, we were getting from World Bank or IMF even 1 rupee, there used to be a lot of what are called conditionalities. Do's and don'ts. But uh, we have not imposed any conditionality or anything. We have just talked about 56,000 My own surmise or my own uh, concern is, before this uh, crisis uh, ends in Europe, we may be giving another 200 to 300,000 crores. Maybe as high as 10% of our GDP. You will be forced to give. And somebody asked me, why do we give? The simple reason is, uh, let me be very clear, our umbilical cards are completely interwoven with the Anglo-Saxon world. Our genetic structure is wired towards that. So when there is a crisis there, we tend to believe that we are in crisis. Because we are part of that. We say look east and other things. That is just, you know, for uh, discussion purposes. Because all of our policy planners, all of our experts, all of our elites, you should see, in some way or other, they are connected to the Anglo-Saxon world. Either they have studied there, or their children are there, or their uh, property is there, or their pension comes from there. So there is a very important thing we should not, uh, you know, ignore or So we may be giving significantly more. That's one thing. Second is, we would like to be part of the white world. So if they are in crisis, we say we are also in crisis. So then only we will be part and parcel of that, uh, the bigger. So we carry, you know, in a peculiar way, now we are having the white man's burden on our shoulders. So we have to sort of have them out. So this is what. But what is the nature of the crisis, if you want to know? Uh, could you just show the one, first one? Yeah. The nature of that, just one, first one only. Just turn it for yeah, no, before. Yeah, yeah this, is the, this is not a crisis for us. If you look at uh, 1990, the share of this uh, G7 country, some of you would be familiar with that, seven country. Now it is called G20. It has been enlarged to include uh, countries like India also. Prior to that, you know, we were not uh, part of it. Now also, we are not in the main uh, dining town. When the small school is put and our place is in that group. You know, it's not that, you know, we are part and part of that. Group for a left, they are alone. <laughs> 56,000 crore is not a small sum to be part of your for a left. So on one side, Merkel, on the other side, the uh, French president. So the G7 has 50% of the global GDP. That is more than half that used to be there. And uh, the so-called emerging market, primarily India, China and uh, Latin American countries had 35, 36 percent. Now in 2015, it was the forecast, but it has already become a fact in 2011, the G7 is only having 36 percent. Whereas India, China and other emerging markets are having 50 percent. So this is the first point we want to make. This is the nature of the crisis faced by the Anglo-Saxon world. It is only to the extent of 36. And it is forecast in another 7 years, that is 8 years, 2020, this 36 could become around 
to 27. That means if they are 27, obviously the remaining will be 73. Of that, you know, excluding some of the other countries, the emerging market would be as high as 60%. Totally 100% would I think you will agree with that. You know, unless you are a Bushara who talks about 400% or 500%. He always says 400% is sure. I could never figure it out where it is. Schooling, area. 100 is that total. So this is the structure of that crisis. And so it is not a crisis for us. It is a crisis for... And the decline is not something easily reversible. In other words, the Western world is in terminal decline. Take my word for it on the 28th Saturday of June. Now, all right. you will remember it. Right. You will remember it. The it is in a terminal decline. In 2008, I was interviewed by some CNBC. They asked how long it will take for them to recover. I told them it will take uh, something like uh, 24 uh, quarters for them to recover. The girl was very sharp. 24 by 4, she asked me, is it 6 years? I told yes. 24 quarter is 6 years, normally. After that, nobody is going to be. Very recently, I was asked in another business channel, how long it will take? I told 80 quarters. And then, uh, she was shocked actually. I told 80 quarters are the professor, we are polite people. We never say they will never recover. <laughs> and so, I have to treat them that uh, They will not recover. I can assure you of that. It's a terminal. But we will just see in a few minutes. Declining affairs are dangerous affairs. Rising affairs are not as dangerous as declining affairs. Because declining affairs would like to create the world with a mirror image of their own declining model. And that is what is going to happen. That's what is uh, we are going to focus. So this is something which and the second point is very quick. It is emerging is a terminology used by the developed world. This is part of what I call the terminological terrorism. <laughs> I call uh, among various terrorism, there is also a terminological terrorism. They call, you know, 80% of Indian economy is unorganized. Unorganized means what? Sort of a feeling of disorganized. So something has to be done. We have to come and clean it up. We will come and set up shop and make it organized. Like uh, I always used to say when I was in uh, graduation, we used to have interesting three papers in economics. One was called American Economic System. Second is European Economic History. Third is Indian Economic Problems. <laughs> <laughs> so very, you know, you are all laughing. But you can see how much the idea has been internalized into my brain. So whenever I look at Indian economy, I look at it as a problem. Because it has been, not just today, it has been told for, so many people have written, so we have to write about that paper and get marks and other things. We have to mother what are all of our so that is the so the terminological terrorism has imposed this word emerging economy. It is not emerging, it is re-emerging economy. Till 1820, India and China had more than 50% of the world GDP. So there is a famous study by you know, Angus Madison by OECD. So much it has been talked about, some of you will be knowing. That clearly establishes from the period of uh, one, that is the CE, this being era, till 1870, uh, India and China were the, because there was an earlier study by one pirate who published that, you know, India and China were actually economically very active. Till then people thought, you know, these two countries were, generally people were living in caves and emailing and exhaling and everything. You know, Noah, you know, that's what they were. But the pirates stood low, they were very active economically. Trade, power, service. This that means, that means they were part and parcel of the material. So you can just show the next one. We won't spend too much time on that. The point we want to stress is, till 1820, we had 50% of the global GDP. After that, it declined due to colonialism and due to the invention of the gunpowder, which the Anglo-Saxon world understood how to use it. You know, we were only having all our pataki and other thing and celebrating before gods. But they knew how to use the gunpowder much better. So that is the decline which started after 18. So I want to stress the point, we are not an emerging economy, we are a re-emerging economy. So whenever you somewhere in some context you come across the world, you immediately say, no, we are only re-emerging. We are retrieving where we were. In other words, the 200 years of the Western dominance is only an intermediate period. 
We call something permanent term. For that matter, in our belief system, nothing is called permanent term. It's a huge amount of a cycle, cosmic cycle we are talking But even then, so we are not emerging, we are re emerging. Now the question is, what is the nature of the crisis? The crisis did come in the last two, three years. It is called Euro crisis. It's not Euro crisis, it's European crisis. Very important to understand. How did it come about? One of the reasons why it came about is huge amount of indebtedness incurred by the different countries of this uh, sphere. What are called the emerging or what are called the developed economies. Can you have a quick look at that number? And uh, this goes on actually changing. Next one. Next one. Yeah, this is the picture. This goes on changing every month and every week it is getting updated. And this is a, as a February figure, January figure. You know, further it has increased actually. You can see the overall debt to GDP of these countries. Like uh, uh, United States is 280, now it is 310%. And Japan is 500%. Uh, huge indebted countries. Uh, you know, uh, Britain, our own UK. Why I call all this? Our own UK. We have to run that country sooner or later. Highest rate percent is their debt to GDP. It's totally unsustainable levels of indebtedness they have all gone In other words, it is as if you know, nobody's business. It's not up to the record. It's gone beyond that. So why such a level of indebtedness? So what is happening? All their you know, banks are in crisis. And correspondingly, all their bond markets are in crisis. And all of them are interlinked with each other. Yes, yes, so there is a what is called the contagion effect is also there. So why this level of indebtedness? One of the major constituents of this indebtedness is not government debt. Government, of course, is having significant amount of debt. Household debts are phenomenally high. You can go to the next one. Jump further. Further jump. Yeah, keep it here. This is the issue. Households have forgotten a six-letter word called saving. There's a very simple six-letter word called saving. Everybody is living as if there is no tomorrow. Huge amount of borrowing. See, in Britain it is uh, practically nearly 100%. All are, and why did they forget the word saving? And it has not gone come about in the last five years, let me tell you. It has come about from nearly 1960. The word saving has been forgotten. It is a six-letter word. Because there is another six-letter word called family. And that has gone. And that is the nature of the crisis we will come to, which we have to face, which we will also be facing, unless we alter our way of doing things. So the entire family system has gone in Europe at present. So when there is no family, there is no need for saving. Why do we save? For instance, Indian sale like nobody's business. Our saving rate is around 36 percent. Household saving is uh, nearly 80 percent of it. About all. And the economy to used to abuse us. You are not saving enough. You are saving some percent. You are hopeless country. Now they are complaining. Why are you saving too much? You consume. You should go to the shop and buy. Shop till you drop. That is a you know, policy. You have to go on. Coming out of the supermarket, you should fall down. <laughs> not able to carry your well. But we save quite a lot of amount even today. And it will continue to be so for the simple reason our uh, mechanisms are different. 80% roughly of our people are self employed. We don't have a generalized uh, social security system like in Europe. You reach the age of 60, what check will come from the government? There nothing will come. You have to take care of you. Same thing about health. You have to take care of your own health. Education. Education is very expensive. All of you know, LKG education is more expensive than uh, MBA today. <laughs> right? You have to know, approach the minister, maybe Krishna Bhatt also. <laughs> from accommodation, <laughs> school, Come here, right? Very people. Because it's, uh, LKG is not your, but you have to study hard. Exams are conducted for parents, grandparents, everything. <laughs> so very expensive proposal. And so for that you have to say, you know, because uh, if you have to pay an initial amount of full life rupees or you know, 70,000 rupees, whatever, 
and then if you have two kids, each of them have to be, right? And uh, very interestingly in India, the, you know, every woman wants to make her children better than her husband. That is our age. <laughs> <laughs> so this one cannot be rectified. I think it will be done. So at least let me make my children. That is one of the primary goals of the woman. Because this is the way she can take vengeance on that useless fellow. So because sometimes they also say when he is not around, but don't be like father, don't be useless. Ready, <laughs> huh? Why I am stressing is if you look at all over India, the education, the mother takes a lot of interest in it. Sometimes father may not even know which standard he is. <laughs> is in fifth or fifth, maybe sixth, uh, you know, I am in ninth, uh, okay. you know, I know that type of discipline. But he knows exactly when is the exam, when is the test, when is the marks are coming up. They take from the most of interest, so including the cost of doing it. And the fourth one is samskaras, all sorts of, you know, marriage, death, birth, all this. And lower the class you are, more actively you participate in these samskaras. Compared to Richard Sedman. Richard Sedman will send one uh, SMS only, very sorry. And uh, you know, that, that really is so why I have sent uh, SMS to Sedman. How is this? A lot of work. Uh, if you are very rich, very poor at Sedman, they take the bus, they go to the place, they buy saris, they participate, you know, all sort of samskaras they uh, involve themselves. All these four constitute the critical element of our saving. It is not any way going to change immediately. So that is the, so we still are a highly saving country. They are all forgotten saving. Why they are forgotten saving? Because the concept of family is gone. If you look at, we will take the next. We won't know financial debt, we won't spend time. Go next. Not required. Not, this is the zero zone debt. Ah, the zero zone, what we were talking about, all of them are in crisis. But everybody wants to make it appear as if, Somebody else is having problems. So you will see the humor here. The Spain is not this. That what the Spanish finance minister declared. Because he says Spain is not. This is the deep problem. But they are not. Portugal is not Greece. That is another fellow declared. That the Prime Minister of Portugal. Greece is not Ireland. That Greece fellow says Ireland is much more difficult than me. You know, so you have scored only 15 percent. No, sir, neighbors can score 10 percent. So I am much better than that. So that is what he told. Spain is neither Ireland nor Portugal. That Spanish finance minister claims. Ireland is not a Greek territory. You know, they are shocking. Neither Spain nor Portugal is Ireland. This fellow is Italy. Secretary General of OECD. Italy is not Spain. That is suddenly one fellow. Because Italy is in also problem. Italy is in deep problem. Italians, no. I am talking about Italy. Don't try to, you know. <laughs> Spain is not Uganda, this is not called one. <laughs> Suddenly one fellow, the Spanish Prime Minister, Mariano Raja, he told Spain is not Uganda. This Uganda foreign minister got annoyed. He says Uganda does not want to be Spain. Very unnecessarily involved that fellow. Uganda. They thought Uganda is a you know, jovial type of That fellow got, you don't want to be Spain. The whole point we want to stress is all of them are Nanda. <laughs> Everybody is telling other fellow is not having the dress. All of them are in dress. And so it is not going to be an easy thing for any one of them to uh, come out of it. Then we'll go to the next. So this is no contagion is all, none except all banks are interlinked, all of the institutions are interlinked. So if somebody sneezes, somebody is going to get fever. So there is no. Now what happened is, this is what is, no, before that, this is another thing which is taking place in the uh, global. No, next one. No, next one. Yeah, this is you have to wait. Maybe I don't know whether it has. Uh, the conversion is. Uh, huh? It's not conversion is not uh, not good. Not there. Yeah. So that's an important thing. Somewhere else you will be able to access. Try about it later. We we'll come to the next one. Okay. Most important. Uh, before that, I will explain. Can you put it? I'll just explain what is happening. The population of Europe used to be 25% during the first world war, 1920, you won't even believe. 25% of the world was living in Europe. Today it is around 11% and it is expected to be 2% in another 25 years. In other words, Europe is demographically declining. 
large number of countries in northern Europe and reproductive rate less than one. The balancing reproductive rate is about three two. So Europe is in acute demographic crisis. There are not enough people. And the existing people are living long. What, what you may call that? Uh, life expectancy at 60 is around 82 and other. And existing people when they live long, the pension funds are having a huge problem. Thank you, don't who provide pension want you to die immediately. He doesn't want you to live. If you have taken life insurance, he wants you to live permanently. This is, and the, both the products are sold by the same company. So one general manager praying you die, another general manager praying you. So people are living very long. Population is not adding from below. If population is not adding from below, obviously your fund won't get further admission. And tax also will not be significant if you want to pay out of your tax. So this is the demographic crisis faced by the hero. And the lower level for what are called brown collar work, to clean your roads, to remove plates from restaurants, various of these activities, they don't have enough white people, their own occupation people. So they depend upon people from Somalia, Algeria, Ethiopia, Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, all these countries. If you go to Europe, all the lower level activities done by people who are of these countries today. So there is a huge amount of a issue. Because quite a large number of them are illegal in For instance, the Parmala, one large, like Nandini Diary in Bangalore, Karnataka, it is in Italy. It's one of the largest private tech. That is sustained and run by people from Punjab. It's not owned or it's run by. All of them are illegal. Who have gone on what is known as manja trip. That is, uh, you know, under the track you hold like this <laughs> and then travel three nights from Punjab to Italy. Six thousand dollars is the amount you have to pay to get yourself into the place. It's a huge illegal Substantial number of illegal migrants in France, UK and various other countries also belong to Islam faith. So there is an anti-migrant feeling is getting converted into anti-Islam So that is another dimension we will immediately focus. So there is a demographic decline in Europe which is accentuating the economic crisis. Number of people, demographic decline. One plus point will be, I am happy because my grandson at least need not mug up. Budapest is the capital of Hungary, Oslo is the capital of Norway, all that is gone. There is nothing, no, none of those will be in the map. So no need for you to Because he may not know what is the capital of Madhya Pradesh, but he has to know what is the capital of uh, Hungary. So we did that. You know, I didn't know what is the capital of Karnataka, but I don't know what is the capital of, or what one can call, Sweden. But Europe is, so Europe is having extraordinary amount of difficulties and problems. And Europe is sitting on the Twitter box for the simple reason I mentioned, you know, huge amount of illegal migrants are belonging to what is popularly what they call as a religion of peace. <laughs> but the people in Europe call their religion as a religion of love. So there is a two types of that. So religion of peace and religion of love are meeting each other on that <laughs> European. And remember, last 2000 years, all wars in the world started in Europe. Later on they were converted into world wars. First it was the Europe war. Right? Then everybody was happy. India was told to join. Burma was told to join. So everybody was. So there is an acute demographic crisis also. And the decline in saving because of lack of families is shown here. You can see here in 2009, 2010 it was 60%. 50% of the children born is out of wedlock in US. In other words, out of 100 child born, 50 children are not out of regular marriage. Either in cohabitation or runaway husband, various type of things. In other words, out of wedlock has become, according to them, new normal. <coughs> new <coughs> normal. That's the word used. My niece in California, she says, after 10 years in a class of 60 people, only 5 students will have proper married father and mother. And they will feel very shy because others will ask, you know your father, yes, I love you. It's a huge crisis, we are laughing about it. What I want to say is, you know, women are there, and I am a professor. 
But unfortunately, I have to use baskets that become the common norm. It is what they call new normal. Can you believe this? It has become a new normal. And they, uh, the uh, New York Times says, marriage is a luxury good. Everybody cannot afford it. <coughs> marriage is a luxury good. It has become. So unless you are of certain elite class, certain where to do, you cannot think of marriage as a option. And single parent, whenever they say it is not single male parent, it is always single one parent, managing two or three children. After the man has family. And our blacks and Latinos, it is very, very bad. So what about that these kids are being taken care of by the government? In terms of food stamps, in terms of so what is happening last 35 years in US and Europe is families are getting naturalized. <laughs> Business is getting private. This system cannot be sovereignty of the family is gone. I am not telling it. The head of the Church of England told me. Last year, year before, I think, maybe last year. Five days, the kids in UK were rioting on the streets. Some of you would have seen it on television or read it in newspapers. Looting everything. All shops, all televisions, all the, you know, cell phones, everything available. Except one in Ipswich, one place. One shop was not touched by anybody. That was a bookshop. You can see the you know, level to which we have gone. Nobody wants to loot a bookshop. They thought let it be. The head of the Church of England says, the underlying cause is very, very severe. What is that? The sovereignty of the family is gone. And he revealed a fascinating thing. In UK, there are more households with the television than fathers. Number of households with television is higher than number of households with fathers. Something very, very interesting. Because a lot of studies are retarded in the, you know, over a longer period of time. There is a role of father in inculcating a sense of discipline among people. You know, father is used as a ruse tool by the mother, you know, and it has a father. Nothing will happen, but still, you know, there is a worry. Because he can always, you know, sort of a, what one can call, uh, uh, bypass the mother or a player. But father is considered as a discipline in the body, or what you may loosely call the king in the system. So, the loss of sovereignty is the fundamental issue faced by the UK uh, system. And that is uh, the head of the Church of England. The reason is we have naturalized families. What is the meaning of naturalizing families? For everything it is the government. Children government should take care, old age government should take care of. If I am ill, immediately what is government doing? Professor is ill. Karnataka government is not taking any steps, is stupid, is just sleeping. <laughs> we have come to that situation, I am telling. Nobody questions what my child, son should do, what my brother should do, no. Government of Karnataka should immediately initiate steps. Because Professor is in. Couple of months before, you would have read in the paper, some 300 beggars from beggar home uh, in Bangalore ran away from their home. Most of them were able to even television or anything. Nobody observed one interesting thing. All television channels, all newspapers attack the government. What the government is doing, what nobody asked a simple question. What about the brothers, the sisters, the parents, the children of these beggars? Nobody asked. As if these beggars are all, you know, came from directly. And the government of Karnataka is totally, I think the government of Karnataka produced the most. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to point out, we are creating a Frankenstein monster. That's the word I want to use. We want to destroy families. We want to destroy any concept of duties. We are creating a right-based society. You can never have an exclusively right-based society. There has to be duties performed by different levels. We have handed over entire our thing to the government. So this beggar thing as an illustration I am telling. Nobody, you know, I was puzzled actually. 
or these people should have some people. What are they doing? Why were they sent here? And not all of them are disabled. Are Most of them are able body people. So there is something fundamentally that is what MNRIT is doing. We will come to that. Over and above this uh, people, you know, huge number of uh, people you know, having the problem of family, huge amount of jobless rate is also increasing. For instance, among uh, youth, youth in Europe is 16 to 24. And like in India where it is flexible, 45 is also <laughs> 62 and fellow is there in Kamala, he is the leader of the youth wing of his party. He is 62 years old, he has got grandchildren. <laughs> okay, I am also youth. Here it is like, look, we are funny. If I always used to wonder if 45 is youth, 20 is definitely yet to be born, right? That's the only way you can uh, look at it, right? Anyhow, there it is very strict, 16 to 24. In Spain, it is 50 percent. No problem. What is the issue is quite a significant number of them are not getting trained in what are called traditional skills and skills. Like our industrial training institute and other things, you know, plumbing, fitting, carpentry. None of them they are This is the crisis. Why are they not interested? Because the family system has broken down. Somebody has to tell them, Ma, go on, do this. So they are in pubs, they are in streets, they are having a lot of music. And we are you know, giving 56,000 crores, we have given to them. And I also give, right? That's what is happening. It's a massive crisis in terms of joblessness. And what could happen, I am telling you, people from Greece and Spain would move into Germany. That's the only product we don't face among all which is reasonably still doing okay. In which case they have direct barriers. As of now, there is no visa system. And it will create and they are on a paper box. <laughs> Any time to that in the next one or two years. So this is what is the most of the do not have skills. That's a fundamental problem. They are exactly replicating the same here in India. The name of Hamanari, we have given one uh, what one can call uh, connection with this. Centre of Science India, one of the website has published an excellent paper and a thorough analysis of what is happening. They are creating a huge bunch of unemployable people. Tamil Nadu and Kerala are full employment according to me. So you don't get anybody to do any work there. Yes, in both the states. From Burkhita, Garment and nothing. Because 25 kg is free rice, another 25 kg is one rupee. And you get 114 rupees out of that, 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 that you know, the political agent will take away something, something, but still you are left to take you. So 40 rupees is no use in things. Largest earner in Tamil Nadu is things for the state government. Yeah. Not the other uh, taxes are there. Merely drink, sleep, and remaining 40 that is rupees he gives home. And a uh, lot of people have sold lands. Because what is the point in keeping land? So we are getting 15,000, 20,000. And so many places, so many you know, things are taking place. Imagine Pradesh, if you catch a monkey, you get 200 rupees. So they claim that they have caught uh, 2,000 monkeys. Who is going to? The same monkeys is again and again caught. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very difficult to keep track of which monkey you. You know, in the olden days, I don't know whether you know this. Uh, buffalo loans used to be given by the banker. Today, buffalo, this fellow will take it. And the bank manager is never trying to distinguish between one buffalo and another buffalo. It's not his technical training. All of them look alike. And after one month, this fellow will go and say, buffalo is dead also. <laughs> Right? And then, uh, so, we have done that, what else? So, loan has to be, so, anyway, this uh, monkey business is uh, going on in the market. Every state is having massive Frankenstein they are creating in the country. After 10 years of this MNRETA, we will have a huge mass of people who cannot do anything. They can only drink, sleep. This is the society we want to create. This is the mirror image of the European society. Because the Europeans are in NAC. Jean Dres and Chairman is also in Europe. National Advisory The entire thing is to destroy the sovereignties of the family, skill formation among youngsters. This is the thing which we are following. Actually, 
If you look at, there are two books I have mentioned here, Charles Burrell, Coming Apart the State of White America, and Right Case Mind. These are two fascinating type of work. So, if some of you have, you know, later, occasion, you must, uh, you know, if you are interested further. So, you can go next. We were, uh, yeah, our Indian thing, okay. Indian, you can go further down. We are not going to spend much time on it. We have uh, uh, looked at the, the level of saving in India. About India, only two, three things we should remember. The Indian growth is primarily due to domestic demand. Chinese growth is primarily due to global demand. 40% of Chinese manufacturing output is exported abroad. In India, it is for Indians. My Chinese colleague at uh, Shanghai University, we have a joint project. She always used to say, in uh, China it is made in China, in India it is made for India. <laughs> it's a huge difference between the two. Our market is so large and we continue to service our market. And where from the financing come, in spite of all our talk about FDI, FI and other things, never in any year it has exceeded more than 10 percent. Maximum of 10 percent. 90 percent of our investment is due to domestic saving. Local saving. But of that 75 percent comes from household saving. I told you. Somebody asked me in Delhi, we are growing and we are actually even now growing above 5 percent. No country in the world is growing above 5 percent. All of Europe is growing minus or 1 percent. We are still growing. So who is responsible for growth? I told you, know, you erect a statue of a housewife. From what I am to come to, the pretty small town, one lady is standing there. She is responsible for our group. Lady without handbag, sorry. If you put the handbag, it will create some other combination, right? An average Indian housewife, statue should be put in every town of this country. She is squarely responsible for the growth rate of our economy. Not the big businesses, not government. It is in spite of government. It is not due to government. Don't get pressure. So it was always underachieving and now it is further underachieving. That's all. Nothing more than that. Our, because fundamentally we should recognize one thing. Our society is organized. Our government is disorganized. Right. So that is the call for our growth. So we can go again. Further, these are growth rates and other things we have given for individual sectors and other things. We can further skip saving rate. We mentioned about it. Our households constitute the bulk of the saving rate and other. We can skip further. More. Composition household saving is very important. Indian households still keep large amount of money only in banks. In spite of so much talking about sex and share market and other things, not even 4-5% goes to share market. The entire amount only goes to banks, postal savings, and uh, EPI, employee provident funds, pension and because they are mandatory. Market. So the role of the stock market, in spite of I being associated with savings from 1990 and other things, the fact of the matter is stock market plays a very, very smaller. In spite of everybody is talking about that and everybody is worried about that and other things. No. But uh, significant and this is the same thing in other Asian economies. They are not unique. <laughs> Japan, for instance, has got one of the most developed capital markets, but not more than 8% goes into the capital market by the outdoors. They all put it in the banks. Even though Japanese banks give very, very low interest. Same thing in Europe. Europe is also bad. The only country obsessed with share market is US. So we tend to think that all over the world everybody is. Huge amount of our money goes into banks. So we are a, what we can loosely call a feminine economics. We are not an aggressive masculine economy. You know, capital market is supposed to be more aggressive. We can go one more area which everybody knows where uh, huge amount of funds are invested is uh, what we may call. What is the next one? We are not able to go. Yeah. Yeah, this is another thing, gold. One third of the world gold we buy. 100 tons produced to the world, 33 tons in buy. Every year from 1916, why 1916 sir, from the 10th statistics is always. So that also we met have been. And there is a huge amount of investment made in 
the form of your life. We don't produce much. Actually, we don't produce anything at all. All of it is. But till 92, most of it is no, it was time like that. And but still, it used to be coming out of uh, Middle East and that. And that is one of the very people tend to forget the banning of the gold as a wrong option. So people like Dawood Ibrahim and other started their career in smuggling good. Good smuggling was one of the primary causes of much, much later what became as a global terrorism in the 70s and 80s. There have always been by and a lot of debate is there and other things. But it is the, not going to stop it. Because it is, first of all, it is highly liquid. Anywhere in the country you can go on, sell it anywhere. It is used as volatile in business that many people forget. Everybody says it is unproductive. They don't understand anything about India. Large amount of small and low level businesses, the security is always diamond or necklace or against which you get a loan. And it is divisible. Small quantities you can buy. You can buy in terms of you know, one year ring or and then slowly accumulate and then convert it into a bank and then into a necklace. And uh, it is easy to liquidate from one generation to another generation without income tax fellows or other fellows getting involved. And ownership is possession in gold. That is, if a Bahu comes, he is given a chain, he can hold it tight with a chain. Nobody has any proof. Nothing. No documentation, nothing. He will hold it tight. And there will be one box, your box, or other. Kindly remember one important thing. Large number of Indian women acquire gold. And if Indian women do something, take it from me, it's the most cleverer and the most shrewd activity they are Immediately give it to Pak. Don't give one facility. Because they know what they are doing about. So it is not going to, and here yeah, the Middle East also have to add with India. This Middle East is not bought by kings, sir. It is all by our own fellows in Qatar, Dubai and other places. You get the point. It's all from our fitter carpenter from Kerala. So it will come to India again. So there was a consulting firm acquired. They were asked by RBI, you know, they told 18,000 gold is the stock in India. 18,000 tons. And I think you know, some of you will know recently that Trivandrum Temple got opened. After that, nobody talks about what is the stock of gold in India. <laughs> I asked recently on RBI and deputy governor, what is the stock of gold, what is your current estimate? He says, Professor, you are very vicious. And then they have stopped that. So after that, you know, one term one okay. Anyhow, my personal view is it's the most foolish thing ever to have been done by the court in this country. Absolutely, the sleeping dog should lie low. In spite of it. Now, what is happening? Every month they are paying couple of crores to keep the police there. And it has to be kept permanently. Not just tomorrow or anything. And global groups are already knows about it. They will be, I'm sure, they will even dig a tunnel under the sea and then come in. <laughs> Not today, I'm telling you. See, France, Germany has got so much sophisticated equipment. But still you may be reading in the paper how people come and steal from the, uh, what was it, the yes, best, uh, you know, these uh, museum pieces and other things. We have, un, you know, unnecessarily we are exposed to ourselves. Because it is something of the order of 500 million. Nobody knows the estimate actually. Because some of them are, and some people are telling, why don't we, you know, take away that money and fill up all our potholes in Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to fill up only the pockets of people, not the uh, potholes, right? right? Unfortunately, it's a, it's a, it's a very different political. <laughs> they are not run out of this, right? So nothing, why, how can this generation claim that that money belongs to us? It has been given by people in 15th century, 16th century, 17th century, right? How can we say that uh, that it is? See, Ireland, which is a Catholic country, is an acute crisis. Spain and Portugal are in an acute crisis. 7 trillion are estimatedly is this Vatican Museum. Nobody asked even one day that one euro of that should be used for those countries. Have you ever read anything that the, what is kept in the Vatican Museum should be used? Here all refresh fellows who do not know history, who do not know geography, who don't know where Kerala is, who don't know where Trivandrum <laughs> is, who don't know Anantha Bhagavanas, they just write issue bonds, you know, give us more 
and uh, let us uh, have uh, more of ropes. There won't be any ropes that can receive them. So this is a uh, huge amount of hidden reserve with that. That's what I want to say. But what is the aware of it? Can you know 1962 during the Chinese, after the Chinese war, in Chennai, I have observed it, some of these leaders belonging to various parties, Rajaji, Kamara, they used to come, go in the jeep. Individual women, housewives, you won't even believe it. They used to give their chains and bangles. When they were going in the jeep with the bags, he made color. People used to give it. Who, what, who not? So it's a hidden desert. Why did they give it? Because the credibility of the leader at that time was phenomenally high. The people who give know that it is going to be used for the purpose for which they are. Today when they come in G, these women run inside the home. Holding the chair, you know, because that fellow will stay there. That is the today's sir. So this hidden is the other day I was going to Bombay when the cabinet minister was going to Delhi and around him some seven or eight uh, SPG was going. One young girl was standing with her mother. He was standing there. That girl, you know, in Canada told her, Amma, you took her under the Because she saw some five, six uh, police going around the curtain. She thought he's a wee bigger. Her mother was uh, giving a hit. Uh, you know, bucks, chop. You know, that was on my ear or something. So I was thinking, it's a fascinating idea I thought. What is that? Why the SPG is given to leaders is to protect us from them. <laughs> Don't criticize next time when you know more. I would say lot of police should be around. Because <laughs> otherwise that fellow will you know pick my pocket or you know take away my you know or even uh, you know harass my wife. I don't know. Whatever it is, increase the number of. So I told uh, some journalist in Delhi, don't go on criticizing. So much uh, police is used for VIP. Let all police be used only for. Then the law and order will be best in the country. <laughs> All MLS, all MPs have got some five policemen around them. You think about it. Won't they have peace? <laughs> so this is the credibility is so low. That's what I want to suggest. Today they come, nobody is going to give. But this is a massive hidden reserve of our country. It can always be tapped, provided an appropriate type of a uh, uh, no, uh, demand is made. I have seen it with my eyes in six years. I used to be in school. People giving, you know, so, without any what you call, no receipt is given, no proof that you have given is given, nothing. We just hand it down. So this is a phenomenal amount of uh, what one can call solid reserve of the country. It's nothing, you know, and it is not in government hands. Can you remember that? That means it is very productive. Anything which is not in government hands is a major productive item in our country. Right? This is something which we should. So we will uh, go to the <coughs> nature of the crisis, no remittance for that. How to leverage before, how to leverage them. See, Maharishi Aravindo told around, uh, if I remember correctly, later part of the day, on the ruins of Western civilization, India will rise. He predicted it. He told it will take place in another 70 to 80, around 2010. From the Vivekananda told in 1897, another 150 years India will, but Manuji told, on the ruins of Western Soviet, it's the most important thing to note. It's not something, and I am very sure a person like Aravindo or a person like Vivekananda won't pay, what one can call one of those, casual treatment. <coughs> so this is what is happening, and this is what we should understand and internalize very quickly. So there are three major conflicts are raging in the world. What is called within Abrahamic religion. Primarily what is called ROL, ROL and ROP. What we will represent as religion of love and religion of peace. This is what I think we should use. Because that is what they can. We will use what they think. And in the process we will bring to ridicule what all that. So this is what. So we will use ROL and ROP. And there is a second conflict between these two and other Hindu and Buddhist civilizations, what are called the ancient civilizations. 
And the third conflict, which according to me is an extraordinarily important conflict, modernism and Hindu Buddhism. These are the three major contemporary conflicts. We are allocating more time for one and two. But the third one is actually a huge monster standing at our door, which will have a great impact in the next 20 to 30 years. Ability to handle it. Because we are a heterogeneous society. We are not a homogeneous society. That is a fundamental thing which we should recognize. You go to the next one, sir. So, ROP and ROL is very simple. ROL has lost in Europe. Absolutely. Every church in Europe is a tourist spot today. You get into a, in Europe, you go and you want to take a tour. First, they will take you to a church. church. <laughs> church is a place of worship. Am I right? Not any so ten fellows will be sitting there. All of them will be above something. <laughs> Nobody goes to church. Europe is completely lost. It's what you call, they are very proud. They have become completely secular. Even Pope himself is complaining that people are not. People are hearing to me but not listening to me. That is the Pope's problem. <laughs> Nobody listens to you. People hear, you know, out of respect. So, so ROL has ROL is the this religion of love. In USA, what they have done is they have re-structured or re-engineered themselves. They call themselves the evangelical. This, uh, you know, all these Pentecostal, Sanskrit Adventists, hundreds of them are. In Bangalore or in and around it appears 75 denominations are there. Only in Bangalore. And huge amount of funds are coming. Maybe in Tamil Nadu are the two major recipients of the funds. City-wise, Bangalore is one of the largest places. So it is the music, dance, and you know they want to attract the youth. It's not, it's not anymore Jesus. It's more of a you know, sort of a. This is the, this is the new world, new world, new age. Europe is the current theater of conflict. What is happening? Unemployment, unemployment. Whenever there is an economic crisis, you tend to blame the migrants. That it is due to them. You know when you are, you know our target says Bihari's are responsible for all problems in Europe. They are not. Local thing, you always try to find some. So, this is the so there is a ROP and so conflict with secular. Now, secular, I told you, Europe has become secular. They cannot handle religion of peace. The reason is secular want to live. The members of the religion of peace want to die. It's a huge gap between them. One group wants to live, another group wants to die. And why they want to die? Because they feel that the group which wants to live, if we take them along, then we will get benefits in the other world. <laughs> so, we may all laugh at it or something, but it is an extraordinarily ingrained belief <laughs> system. So, there, one group Swadharma is to live, other group Swadharma is to kill. What do you do with this? How do you reconcile this? Not easy. So that is why ROL will lose out. They want to live. And ROP want to. And demographically they are going. As late as 1970s, there was one of the, I am not getting his exact name, in the EGP told, one of the very profound scholars he told, the future of Islam is in the womb of the woman of Islam. What now? He told in the beginning of 19. That's where the future lies. So don't worry about it. As long as there are women, long, the future is. Okay. So demographically, they are much, much more strengthening. Well, the religion of love has gone into post contraceptive society. Because the Pope himself says that people are not listening to me. Nobody is concerned about what I am. Because he is propagating that, you know, don't uh, go for family planning and all Nobody is eating it. So we will go to the next. This is the conflict between ROP and ROL. This is a very minor one, if you call this, in the Manga. Next one, if you go, conflict between ROP and ROL and others. This is, a, this is what we are spending a lot of time and energy. What do they want? They want homogenization. Both of them. My way or? To the extent, very interesting, the Vatican says that Protestants are less possibility of going to heaven compared to us. 
we have our road is poor, but there is slightly within that. Everybody is saying my way or my path is the only path. And we always start with you know 100 rivers reach the ocean and uh, you know all the rivers are they don't agree with that. They say there is only one river and there is no ocean. You get into that and get lost. And the most important is purity of behavior. Everybody wants to say that our group is the most pure. So we can see here too many Ramdias are not accepted. <coughs> there was a global laureate from Pakistan who belonged to the Ramdias. He was working in Denmark. I am not getting his name immediately. Huh? No, no. Huh? Salam, I think. Right? Huh? Do salam. Do salam. No, no, salam. Salam. Yeah. Very interesting. They put up a board for his uh, cemetery. First Muslim Nobel laureate in physics. But some local council people objected to it. Because he is Amadeya. So they removed the word Muslim. So that is now first Nobel laureate in physics. What is it? <laughs> so many Nobel laureates in physics in the much area. Why I am highlighting this is, this is the extent to which this <laughs> purity is known. Each one wanting to eliminate the other. And uh, no accept, see atheists and agnostics, only Indian tradition accepted from day one. Atheists and agnostics are considered as part and parcel of our, we were never unhappy with them, we were never, we were going to say, you know, they are, actually he used to say they are the most courageous people gave in one of his talks telling that atheist and agnostic are the most courageous people. To say that they are atheist and there is absolutely there is no other system in the world that will explicitly recognize atheist and agnostic. They are the only one who are that is one of the most important things. You know, unless you accept the negationist, we didn't tolerate them or anything. We accepted them, okay, it's your we will have debates. We will have not that we will we will in peace. We will. Peace means we are not going to hurt them or anything, but we will debate. You know, we can teach people by debate. You know that, right? Look at our assembly and parliament. You know, the type of debate they do, no? So, so very. So, failure of multiculturalism because of homogeneity. They want everything to be of the same of that. But having heterogeneity as a phenomenal amount of issues because we all want to again become homogenized. See when you when you continuously and constantly uh, meet an enemy, you tend to acquire the characteristics of the enemy. You tend to acquire the characteristics of the enemy. You'll see the next one. But heterogenization is the major positive thing. Of that, one of the major important things is caste. Caste is a social capital. Many people will immediately look at, ah, what is this process? Is <laughs> Nothing. It is that. You tell me, sir, in the written history, even by Marxist, in the last 1500 years, there were no caste wars. There should have been massive caste wars between Gurmets and Yadavs, Yadavs and Devas, Devas and... You tell me, where was the caste wars? Give me one massive caste wars in India. The caste wars are all of recent origin, because every political party has become a Caste party. Very caste was not one political party in India. So very interesting thing. Caste should be abolished. It started with Gaudama the Buddha. And then Bhashweshara and then our Kachi Ram and then our Ive Ram Sabi Nagar. Where we have ended is every caste has got a political party. New caste party. Hmm? New caste party. Yeah, thank you. So this is uh, actually this is very interesting. Where did the caste discrimination came? Caste discrimination is the invention of the British. As much as a scheming. <coughs> Here to that, we always have caste. Frankly, don't try to confuse between the two. The 1881 census, they went with the vengeance. The reason is, much before that, in the earlier periods, uh, 18, 20, uh, to 15 to 25, our uh, uh, Dharmapal has returned. Schools were, significant number of school participants were what we call people belonging to BC and SC. British thought 
the best way is to create a hierarchy. In their own mirror image, in Britain there is a class hierarchy. So in their own mirror image they wanted to create in India. 1881. See, 1921 class were identified in 1880. <laughs> Today of course it has run into some 30,000 of them. Today everybody is a class. 1929 class were identified. 1126 and population you will be surprised of less than 1000. And you know very interesting thing, large number of cast were one member cast. Iki member, I am a cast by myself. So British thought best thing is to create hierarchy in terms of ABC type of thing. Higher, middle, lower. That time it was fragmentation because every individual felt is a my neighbor what cast he told sorry he told ah I am not I am a different <laughs> now it is adaptation that's all it is suddenly you get to do you know they were there there was nothing it used to be three cast and within that there were seven or eight suddenly a new cast you know, there is within that there are so many endogamous and exogamous people don't even marry with but this is purely a political which has just to get some extra votes and it's not going to localization in 90, of the 1929 class you will be shocked actually 74% were found in one locality not all over the and a uh, lot of other studies by Amman Sinha so many said nobody accept their backward class the three lowest possible you interact with them or interview they will say they were the kings originally in between it's our problem and so we are now suddenly we will again become things. So there is a why we are telling is if you want to delegitimize ROP and ROI, we must use cash. That is the best weapon to delegitimize. Because they want to harmonize, they want to homogenize. You use this. And uh, actually there is nothing common between Taiwan Muslim and Burmi Muslim. You tell me what is common. Nothing. So what I feel is we have made a mistake in trying to create an artificial entity called a Muslim community or Christian community. It is a mistake of the age. Think about it and creating a huge amount of a, uh, what one call a, a contestable or debatable issue. So we have, according to me, we have created an Islamic and Muslim entity. There was no originality. Even today I am telling large number of villages issues, there is nothing called a Islamic entity. There will only be local issues, local caste. So there is some people will argue, if you are talking only heterogeneity, what about uh, homogeneity of army, for instance? At least army has to be homogeneous, there you cannot have a, everybody has to get up at 5.30 and do the drill. Or, or the six in the olden days who were so long of the protection of India. There will always be homogeneous entities in the country. There will always be there. What is their role? To protect heterogeneity. What is the role of the army or what is the role of RSS? To protect heterogeneity. Because heterogeneity never understood the external invasion. Never understood the issues of that some other faith can believe that you cannot be of this faith. So there is a need to so it will always be there. And not that everybody will become a member of army or everybody will eat water. Somebody asks Swami Vivekananda, Sir, you are a sannyasi, if you know, everybody follows you, you laugh. All are never going to become There will be some sannyasi, there will be large number of, actually there will be proportion of brahmasas will be much more. So homogeneity will be there in certain segment. It is required. What for? To protect that. We can go to the next one. That is the major strength of our family. This is what we want to stress. Class discrimination, if you, you know, there is 1822, 1825, a survey done by the British, the, our uh, friend uh, Dharampal actually is uh, talking about it. The share of what is called the uh, Sudra, that is SC and OBC in those days. It was, you can see that 70 to 80 percent, 62 percent in Oriya areas, Malayalam areas 54 percent. The so called upper caste had only 20 and 30 percent. That was more in Madras, India, and Kolkata. This is the study which made the British realize there is a need to hierarchify the Indian system and destroy our education system. Because this is secular education. 
This is not the education for uh, you know reading your uh, Vedas and so they thought that uh, this is not going to this has to be turned completely upside down by creating hierarchy. The source is Dharampal. I think uh, I might have gone somewhere. Dharampal, there is a beautiful tree. There is a book which is available free on the internet. Right? Free means there will always be some enthusiasm. Right? So that is why you know, somebody at least will create a beautiful tree. It's a extremely well written. Substantial book. Dharampal, one of the original Gandhian things. He didn't belong to uh, what you can call the Safran Brigade. It's the original Gandhian thing. So we can go to the next one. This is the main thing which we have to. I am looking at something like 2050. Why are you looking at 2050? Sir? That is why. That is why there are some crackpots and professors who are in this country. They are expected to look ahead, not uh, you know. Unlike you know some of the chief ministers who are looking for the next to you know what will happen Monday morning. Today is Saturday. You know. Will I be here? I am looking. For it. This is the major thing. This is the spirit of Christianity. What you may call modernism or secularism. Why? Because it's a post-contraceptive society. So most important thing to understand. It's not uh, this is something which came in 57. It has completely altered the Europe. Completely altered the landscape of and uh, issues of homosexuality, concept of living together, cohabitation and uh, what is called the LGBT that is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. that is what is called LGBT. The reason is why I am abusing this is these are all no more considered as anything to be what one can call looked down upon or anything to be even ignored. So these are all to be venerated, these are all to be emulated. This is the state we have come to. 15 years before, if a child is born, I have to ask you know, whether it is a boy or a girl. Today, some of my students is getting married, I have to ask, are you married, huh? boy or a girl? No, no, I'm, I'm not condemning or anything. I'm only telling the way we are. When they LGBT conduct a parade, it is given in the TV as something to be looked upon. Because we are creating a rights-based society. We are creating a society based on Everybody has got some rights. My name is Vaidyanathan. So I am also legally challenged. <laughs> we, in independent play school, you know, they have to, you know, when the teacher was, you would say stand as per also. He's Anand Aravind, everybody will get chocolate. Never me. Behind me on Xavier is there. So I am a President of the alphabetically challenged with people on that. <laughs> and when I went to China, I was very happy because I was first with the few. All are research, they excel. Not excel. Not in So, what I want to say is everybody is a victim of this. There is a huge amount of victim mood we have created. And uh, one side victim mood, other side guilty. Those who are not, you know, those who are Arabians are made to feel guilty. Oh, you, our name is starting with yeah. yeah. This fellow's name is starting with So my victim mode and his guilt is aligned. And that is the agenda of the secular. The secular would like to destroy the society. Let me tell you honestly. The aim of secular is not something to propagate or protect or anything. Destruction of the community and the family. And one of the tools is creating victim mode and creating guilt. So the start the debate itself, they will start it as a guilt. Or you're not guilty. Why should I be guilty? No, no, you must be No, I didn't do anything. No, your father. No, he didn't do anything. No, no, no his grandfather. No, seventh century AD. Are you aware of it? He is also not aware of it. It is abuse. You have done something. That's the starting point. And what about that fellow? That fellow has suffered a lot. No, no, he seems to be going in Ben Star and he is well. His father is IAS. No, 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 his grandfather. His <laughs> great grandfather. Because, I will tell you one thing in India, past is uncertain. Take my word for it. In very other countries, future is uncertain. For us, past is uncertain. 
has been deliberately made uncertain because you can't anchor yourself to it. If a society can anchor itself to something, then it will flourish. It will be prevented from anchoring itself to it. That is why the left historians have seen to it your past is made uncertain. You know, all churches are Pope himself complained. Islam is doing a violent battle against modernism. What is the current? Islam is not fighting Christianity. Mark my word on that. Because Islam knows Christianity is Katam again. cannot stand. Some Africa and other places, something is going on. The main concern of Islam is modernism. Islam is totally against Pope called the Church of Islam. Cannot stand on those systems. Cannot accept living to Over and above the role of human. That is what the fundamental issue of Islam is with modernism. It feels modernism will completely finish off Islam as much as it has finished off Christianity. So what how do they do it? They do it in terms of one is 